Hi friends. So today I'm going to talk about the campus visit. And essentially this is a situation which happens if you have submitted your resume for a faculty position, you have been shortlisted, you have gone through a screening interview, and now they have decided to call you for a visit to the campus of the university. So let's look at how this thing pans out. Now, essentially, you have to set a date for this visit and here you will be corresponding back and forth with the selection committee chairperson as to what is a good date for both you and the faculty concerned because these guys have to find a date which is suitable for the chairman, for the department, faculty, for the deans and so on. And they should not be at a time when there is some important thing going on such as examinations or uh, recruitment or things like that. So essentially what happens is that um, you are told to come on a day. It can be one day or two days. Let's presume a situation of one day which is more common but sometimes this can stretch for two days also. So if you are called for a one day interview, it is always best to reach the university the night before. So essentially what you should try to do is um, schedule your flight such that you reach the night before. You stay in a hotel or guest house provided by the university. Most likely they are going to provide some place for you and then you are fresh in the morning. Now the first thing you may be asked to do is go to breakfast with the selection committee chair and this looks very uh, informal to you but remember that you are being judged right from the word go so the selection committee chairman is going to tell you the plan for the day and he is going to also tell you the different time slots the time for your research presentation teaching presentation if it is there and so on now in most cases this is going to be communicated to you before the interview actually takes place but remember that as far as universities are concerned there are always going to be some last minute changes some guys who were supposed to be there are not there and so on so you may be given a new sheet of paper at this point or send something via mail or message which you can look at as to what is the plan for the day now during the breakfast this uh, chairman of the selection committee is basically going to ask you about um, your research about what made you apply to the university and uh, general things about your visit and so on so it's more of an icebreaker now once you have done this you may meet the chair of the department so this is often the case where the selection committee chair will take you to the chair of the department and then leave you with this person now this part is important because the chairman of the department is going to ask you questions about your research, about your teaching capability, he's going to brief you about the department, about um, aspects of the department history, the requirements, whether it's focused on teaching, whether it's focused on research, where are the grant monies coming from, what are the typical desires of the students and their parents, uh, what is the type of graduate program they have and so on. So. Essentially, you will then be asked certain things about uh, your interest in the university, about what is the typical plan you have for research and so on. So this is again a going back and forth between the chairperson and you and the chairperson is trying to make out whether you are somebody who is really useful to the department and you also have to give your best self forward at this point as to how you are going to contribute to this department. So that's the main aim of this discussion. So once you have finished the meeting with the chair and generally these meetings last for 30 minutes or a maximum of 45 minutes, you often get to meet a select group of senior faculty. And these are the different professors in the department, especially if you are a specialized person in a field, you may meet more of the faculty who are specialized in this field. And these interviews are important because these people are going to tell you about their research which of course they expect you to know by producing their web pages, their Google Scholar profiles and so on and then they are going to ask you probing questions about your research and they are going to investigate if your research complements their research or is there 
something you bring to the table which they do not know so this is an important thing which these guys are going to do now depending on the background of these faculty they may ask you questions pertaining to research or they may ask you per questions pertaining to te teaching so don't be surprised if they ask you very specific questions as to which conferences you go to what are the courses you really like they may ask you some very fundamental questions also like i have a difficult problem communicating this concept to students so how do you think this can be done and so on so sometimes the professors also also try to learn from the candidates as to ways they can improve their research and teaching so that's something to keep in mind now once you have met these faculty there is often a research talk and this research talk may be typically 45 minutes and this research talk is a very important part of your visit here this is a talk where most of the faculty will come the dean may come several students may come a lot of grad students will come and so on so in this talk you essentially give an outline of your research and then you present some of the problems which you are going to work on in the future you may also present a slide or two about what are the courses you are likely to take depending on the teaching focus of the university and who are the likely people who are going to fund your research if and when you join the university so these are some of the outline of the research talk now the research talk is very important and uh, you need to keep in mind that you need to keep the talk at a level which is sufficiently technical or scientific or scholarly but not too deep because these guys are not experts in your narrow research area so it's not like going to a conference and presenting a talk on non-deterministic modeling of dynamic systems where all the guys in the room essentially know that topic so here you have to first of all explain what is non-deterministic you have to explain what are dynamic systems and some of these things so you need to then have a slide or two before each of these concepts explaining these things and putting them in the big picture so that's an important part of converting a research talk which is given in a conference or in a phd exam into an actual research talk which is given at a typical university so once this research talk is completed you are going to be asked some questions and it's very important to answer these questions properly show the same amount of uh, decorum and respect to a grad student asking question as you show to a senior professor these things are judged at this point as to what is your general demeanor as far as researchers are concerned now after this very often you are quite burnt out and tired so they are going to take you for a lunch and again the lunch is with selected faculty maybe these are some of the faculties who didn't show up in your research talk and they may just chat with you they may tell you some things about the university they may tell you things about the promotion procedure expectations and so on so you can often ask some probing questions about these aspects to the faculty here you can also ask them questions about some aspects of life in the campus or the issues regarding schools around the campus and so on or where you can stay and some of these personal questions now at the end of this lunch you may be taken to a lab tour or a department tour and again some junior faculty is going to be given out to you to take you around the university so they will probably show you some of the main facilities which are used to showcase the department so take a look at all these facilities look at the dimensions of the lab space concerned and maybe ask a few probing questions about the type of lab space that can be expected by a new faculty about the possible grants you can get from the university about some of the bodies which fund your work and if you can use any of the facilities in some of the different lab spaces so all these uh, are important questions and also show that the candidate is actually a serious person so some of the important things here are to clearly show uh, interest in the things which are going on in the department and be as polite as possible during this time you are also going to meet various phd students who are working in the labs and again you can ask them some probing questions about their research and again you may learn some interesting things to them and again remember that all these are being noted down by the faculty concerned the interactions and so on because remember that generally people know that technically you are pretty good and what matters at this stage and later stages in your life are the human relations and interactions you have with the phd students and the faculty in general so these are things which they are trying to find out here at this uh, point 
Now, after this, there may be a meeting with students. This happens in some departments. They may let you meet UG students, graduate students, and so on. And these students may ask you a few questions. You can ask them some questions about typical class sizes, about the way the exams are conducted, about some of the possibilities of job placement, and so on. So, these are some of the questions which people like. And again, the students will report back to the faculty about how they liked you and all. So, it's important at this stage to be somewhat liked by the student. Now, in many schools or in, I should say, in some schools which are more teaching focused at this point, they are going to have a teaching demonstration. So, you may have to give a 45 minute class and here pick a topic which is um, something which is not too complicated, which is something where you can write things on the whiteboard and then turn around and talk to the students concerned because don't pick a topic which is all equations so you are just staring at the whiteboard and writing the equations so it should be something which is a combination of equations and graphs or a combination of some concepts which you can put down and then discuss these concepts and so on so spend some of your time writing things down on the whiteboard and spend an equal amount or more of your time talking to the students and remember that at the end of each concept, try to ask the students as to what are the questions they have and if they have understood something or not. And if possible, at the end of the class, include a simple example. If you are doing a theoretical or an engineering class, um, it may be a simple solve problem or it may be a computer problem or something like that. Now, at the end of this teaching demonstration, you may meet some more faculty. This time, you may meet more junior faculty who were left out in the previous meetings. So, again, chat with them, get the vibration from them about the aspects of the department, ask them about various aspects about teaching, research, research they do, funding they get, and so on. And then, at the end of this, you may be asked to meet the dean. And so, during this point, the dean is going to ask you very fundamental questions as to funding your vision and so on. So again, it's your job to ask the dean some questions. Don't let him ask all the questions to you. So make sure that you ask them some questions about uh, how you can go to conferences, about um, what are the different research collaborations which are encouraged by the department, what is the long-term focus of the department and so on, and what's the department's role within the university. So, once all this is done, then generally the faculty will take you out for a dinner. During the dinner, don't wind down too much. Make sure that you are still at your best self and talk properly. They will now discuss some other issues to you, probe you further, try to figure out whether you are a serious candidate, whether you are applying to the department with real intent to join the department. And if you join the department, will you be staying there for the long term? They will try to probe things about your family. Do you have a family? If so, is your family willing to move? What are your long term plans with respect to your family and so on? Because these all things are important, especially if the location of the university is not very central, then sometimes the faculty may actually not move to that university if their spouse is not willing to move. So they try to figure out various things at this point, try to make sure that you keep your answers as professional as possible and um, give replies which are best in terms of your prospect of getting the job. So this was my take on how to prepare for the campus visit. As I mentioned before, if you are called for the campus visit, you are indeed very lucky because only a short list of candidates actually make it to the campus visit. So there may be two, three, four candidates who are called to the campus visit. So what happens is that about 200, 300 CVs are received by the department and then that is whittled down to something like 10 CVs where people are called on Skype or Zoom or Team and then that is further whittled down to two, three, four people and finally a selection is made of one or two candidates, in most cases one candidate. So as you can realize, the faculty selection process is very competitive, it is very rigorous, it's very tough, you need a lot of stamina to go through this day. So make sure that you eat well, you don't eat uh, food which is too difficult to manage for your system because then you will be feeling drowsy during the afternoon sessions and so on. So make sure you think about all these aspects and dress as professionally as possible because remember that even the, though the other people may be dressed casually, 
it is expected that you dress professionally because by dressing professionally you give your best self forward and this is very important whenever you are going to these kind of situations so i hope you enjoyed this video i will see you sometime soon see you then